my instinct is to hide. <laughs> my instinct is to not be seen because then I can't be ridiculed. Then no one can judge me. Then no one can say that this was stupid or this was bad. Can we talk about having self-confidence to have your own voice? And has that changed since you've moved around the U.S.? I love that question um, because it's something that I teach now because I think in Hollywood in particular, you really need to be confident in who you are, I think. I think a lot of us who come out to the industry, I've just noticed a lot of people struggle with self-confidence, self-esteem, self-love. And I think that because our industry is so unstructured, because there's such um, a lack of a clear point A to point B sometimes, like it can just always be very amorphous for all of us, whether you're successful or not. Um, whether you get that external validation from the industry or not, it is difficult to not take some of the rejections and the failures personally. And it's easy to like internalize those things. Cause I, so I think it's really important whether you do it before you enter the industry or while you're in it to really center and understand how important it is to have a sense of value in yourself, have a sense of self-love for yourself that is not only a reflection of what you produce. Um, whether you produce things or not, whether you did great today or not, whether the performance went well or not, there has to be a a foundation of self-love. And I really struggled with that. I really did not have a lot of self-confidence when I first got to Hollywood. And I felt that it was something that really held me back. It made me nervous when I talked to my managers and my agents. Um, it made me feel like I couldn't really push back with my lawyer. It made me feel like I struggled with a lot of imposter syndrome when it came to being in the writer's room and not really feeling like I belong there and not really feeling like I deserved a seat at the table. Now, whether or not those things were true, the fact of the matter is that I was there and that I did have a, a, a value to give. My voice and my perspective and my history, all those things are valuable. Um, and those things are valuable no matter what, and that's it. Those things are valuable no matter what. You are valuable no matter what, and you have to walk around understanding that and knowing that because as soon as you start to, as soon as you get into adulthood and you start to look to the world to fill that void and to give you that validation for somebody to tell you that you have value, once you're waiting for that, then it, to me, it feels like an open wound that can never really be healed because y y now you have the habit of like filling that void with val outside validation instead of the habit of filling that void with your own validation or not having that void at all because you've given yourself that self-love and that self-validation. And I think what it really comes down to is just, I think self-esteem is about like self-love um, and putting work into things that you care about, showing up for yourself. I think, um, I think it's just incredibly important to practice self-compassion, um, and being compassionate with yourself and knowing that you're worthy of compassion, whether you produce things or not, because we're in a very capitalist society that associates all of our value with what we produce. And I think this can be very damaging to the psyche and to the self. And I think the, the way that I found to combat that is with self-compassion, is by giving myself the love that I need, whether it's by not criticizing myself or not doing something well enough, um, letting myself rest when I'm tired, letting myself cre be in front of people, letting myself be seen because I think that, you know, I'm safe to be seen. You know, so much of this is about, you know, this internal mental um, tape that's going on that a lot of us have of like, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you're not this. And that voice needs to be interrupted and acknowledged and looked at and not just allowed to run wild, that voice needs to be like, hey, <laughs> what, where is that coming from? What is this, you know? 
um, I'm not worthy, you notice it. So there's this thing that I teach in my course that I learned from um, Tara Brock. Uh, she has this book called Radical Acceptance that I really love. And her book is the thing that introduced self-compassion to me. And she has this technique that she calls RAIN, where she teaches you how to implement self-compassion in the moment. And it's very simple. So it's just RAIN st stands for recognize, allow, investigate, nurture. And when she talks about recognize, she, she means to recognize what she calls the trance of unworthiness. So once you have that tape going on in your mind, of, I'm not good enough, it's not going to be good, they're not going to like it, da, da, da. whether you're going in for a pitch or whatever it is that's going on in your mind, if it's in your relationship, he doesn't really like me, she doesn't really like me, whatever that's going on in your mind, recognize that I'm in the trance of unworthiness. Allow, you don't need to fight this, this feeling of whatever the unworthiness is. You don't need to fight it, you can allow it, you can let it be there. Investigate. Where is it coming from? Why is it there? Why don't I feel like I belong here? Why don't I feel like this? Because then you think about, oh, this, this happened and that made me feel like that. Is it true? Am I still in that situation? Am I in a completely different place? Am I just replaying a pattern that kept me safe a long time ago? Do I need this pattern anymore? Can I continue on without it? Nurture, give yourself the compassion you need. It's okay, you need rest, <laughs> you've been through a lot. Whatever the, the, the compassionate voice that you need, that compa compassionate parent figure that you maybe didn't have, like you give it to yourself in that moment. And once you're doing this RAIN technique a lot, I've been able to do it in like two seconds now. Like, you know, I'll recognize I'm, I'm in a bad place. I'll allow it. I'll investigate it. I'll nurture it. And I'll move forward. And this practice of self-compassion turns very slowly into self-love, and which turns into self-confidence. Um, because once you're able to like get past this negative self-talk, you can get to the actual work. You know, you can get to the actual creating. Um, because a lot of that I think is just like in the way of us living our most authentic, best creative lives. So that's the big lesson that I've learned is that like this self-confidence is foundational to your success and your happiness and your longevity. And the way to get to it is to start with self-compassion. And that's great. Is that, you said Tara Brock? Tara Brock. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, radical acceptance. And what does allowing yourself to be seen, what does that mean? So this is something that... I don't know why we struggle with it so much. I know I've struggled with it a ton. I have the, um, I just, my instinct is to hide. <laughs> my instinct is to not be seen because then I can't be ridiculed. Then no one can judge me. Then no one can say that this was stupid or this was bad. You know, putting out my short film, my Witchsters short film, I was like, oh my God, they're gonna think it's so dumb. But it's like, but I think it's fun. So I'm gonna have to put it out and also, I want to see, I want, this was my first directing project and I need to gauge where I am as a director. I need to get feedback from the world about where I am. So I'm going to have to be able to be, I'm going to have to be seen, what, you know, and it has been very difficult for me to be seen in the past. Uh, but I've done a lot of that rain. I've done a lot of like recognizing, allowing, investigating and nurturing, whatever it is, um, whatever this fear is, whatever this feeling of unworthiness is that has kept me hiding. Um, and it's been, I think it's been profound. I think it's an important experience to go through. Like if you have something that you want to create, I almost think that it is a invitation to love yourself. And I don't know how to explain it, but I just think that like creation is such a existential process. Like it is such a like, we're human beings and as human beings, like we have the ability to make things, to write things, to come up with stories, um, to connect with people in that way. And I think that um, that fear of being seen is all about lacking a sense of safety. And I feel like it's about creating a sense of safety for yourself by doing, you know, whatever the thing, whatever it is that you need, whether that is 
practicing being seen, practicing being seen as yourself, whatever you need for that. Sometimes the being seen is what you need.